Hey there, I'm Robert from the Rive Creative Team, and welcome back to the short tutorial on the basics of UI. In the previous videos, we started by setting up a page that worked with mouse listeners. Then we took that page and we upgraded it to make sure that it could work with controllers. In this video, I'll show you the last little steps that you need to take to set up your main menu page so that you can get from your main menu page to any other page that you've designed. We'll focus on adding some events to the menu page and then focus on adding specific events to any other page that you plan to add. I'll be linking some additional videos down in the description on events to help you understand how they work a bit better. With all that being said, let's get into it. I've added in some new pages specifically for this video, uh, just so we can see how we need to set up uh, each page so that we can communicate or have those pages communicate uh, at runtime. So let's quickly look at these new pages. Now they're all set up the same way as the menu and as far as their inputs are concerned, we've got an is open Boolean and then a menu index that controls uh, which one of the items is selected. Now there's a couple um, different things uh, like this has a difficulty index. Uh, I believe one of these has a different, I uh, know, uh, maybe it's just that one that's a little different. Um, but in general, the setup is the exact same on these pages as it is here on the main menu page. So if you're curious about how all that's set up, I recommend going back and watching the last video so that you can uh, see how all that was done. Now in this video, what we need to do is set up a system that allows uh, our main menu page to communicate with these other pages. And we're gonna use events to do that. Now, the reason that we're using events is that at runtime, we need to know when one of these options has been selected uh, so that we can um, toggle this is open Boolean. Now, engineers could probably come up in a way to do that on their own without events, but if we're trying to be nice to them and uh, communicate as best as we can, we wanna use events. So really what events allow us to do is send out signals. And what we're gonna do is set up a signal for each one of these menu buttons. That way, the other pages know when one of these buttons has been selected. So the first thing that we're gonna do is add some events. Now to add an event, uh, if you again, didn't watch the last video, you can go up here to the events tool or hit uh, shift E on the keyboard. That'll activate the tool. And then you can click to add a new event. So we need one event for each one of these different uh, options. So we need to duplicate this a couple times. So I'm just going to use command D and then command D again, and one more time. So now we have one event for each possible button. Now we need to rename these so that we know what they're for. So the first one's going to be new game. The second one is going to be load game. The next one is settings. And the last one is exit. All right, we've got our um, events. And now what we need to do is set up a way to uh, fire these events based off of which one of these options is selected. So we need to do two things. The first thing that we need to do is add in a new input. And it's going to be a trigger. And I'm going to call this continue. Now, this continue input is going to be used uh, mostly for the controller. So when you, um, you know, hit the A button or the X button, depending on which controller uh, type that you're using or a generic one, um, this trigger is going to go off. And um, we are going to use these states that we have here uh, to actually um, to uh, fire off these different events. So let's add in a blank state. Now, nothing needs to be on the state because really what we need this for are the transitions. You can see I've just created a transition from these states to this blank animation state. And um, what we're gonna do is tie the event to this transition. So uh, for the first transition, that's when new game is um, highlighted. If you hit continue from new game, I wanna fire off the new game event at the start of the transition. So let's add that condition in there, continue. So now what it's saying is when uh, continue is hit, this continue trigger from this state, make this transition. And all this transition is doing, I don't care about what's on the animation. I only care about uh, kicking off this event. 
Now, once this happens, this transition is going to start and then it's going to instantly come back to uh, the first option here. So we need to uh, continue this pattern for the next um, few options. So the next one's going to be load game. Oh, again, we're going to use continue as the condition. Let's do that again for number three, continue. And then we'll do the settings event. And then finally, we'll use the exit event on the fourth transition. And once again, use uh, that continue trigger. Okay, so now if we play our state machine and we turn this on, um, and let's say we go to um, the first option and we hit that continue trigger, you'll see that the new game event fired. And if you, in case you missed that, I'll do that again. When we hit continue, the new game fire event happens. So that would let the runtime know that, hey, this new game option is the one that we want. And now we can configure some of our other inputs based off of that event. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add a new event to um, our, or not a new event, but a new uh, set of listeners. So that first set that we created are the hover listeners. The next one that we're going to make is um, we actually need to add an event here to our component because we also want to know when our component is being selected um, with our mouse because right now it's set up for the controller. So we're going to call this the is selected event. And we're going to tie it to this hitbox. So we'll create a new listener targeting this hitbox. And when the pointer goes down, we want to fire off uh, an event. We want to fire the is selected event. So now, um, whenever we click on it, you can see that the is selected event happens. And then we're going to use um, this. We're going to go back to the main page and create four new listeners, one for each one of these buttons that listens for that is selected event. And when that is selected event goes off, we're gonna fire the continue trigger from the inputs panel. So we've got that one. I'm just gonna duplicate this a couple more times and then just change the target. And then everything else is right. So now when the is selected event goes off from menu item two, fire continue. When it goes off from menu item three, fire continue. When it goes off from menu item four, fire continue. All right, so I can dump those into a new folder and call that the continue listener. Okay, so now when we fire up our state machine and we click, you can see that um, those events are firing uh, based off of which one of these um, menu items that we select. Now we are almost done. Um, there are some other things that our engineers could take care of us, uh, could take care for us. Like um, let's say we want uh, to close this page or have some um, menu index saved depending on which one of these events go off. So let's say, for example, um, when we click on the new game event, we want to close this menu. So what we can do is create a listener um, by targeting the page here. And now you can see that the events here are listed um, as the events that we're looking for. So let's say when new game goes off, we can set the is open Boolean for our main page to false. So now when we start up the page and we click on new game, you can see that the uh, is Boolean was toggled off. So we got that closing animation. Now we could go farther with that. We could go in here and change up our inputs a little bit more and say, um, we also want to make the menu index zero so that when we come back to this page, we don't have any sort of selection, um, you know, highlighted. So now what it would look like is is open, we click on new game. You can see that it closes it and our menu index is zero. So when we reopen the page, like if we come back to the page from a separate page, we don't have anything selected. Now, obviously you can change up this uh, configuration to really make it do whatever you want. But what you, what you want more than anything is for each one of these pages, when their events go off, um, you just set the is open Boolean for this page to false. Okay, so that is what we need to do on the main page. But on our other pages, what I've got is I have this back uh, button that I have set up and it's just like our uh, menu item. 
it has a open and close toggle. And all that does is open and close the uh, hit box. And we have a uh, hovered listener and we have, um, we have a, um, we have a back listener and that happens whenever we click on, um, whenever we click on the object, you can see that happening here. Okay. So now based on that button, I've taken that button and I've nested it in all three of my pages and they're all set up the same way. Um, you can see here that I have a listener and what this listener does is it listens for the uh, back button. And when it hears the report, um, of that event from the back button, um, it fires off an event on the uh, page. So I have an event here called back. Now, the reason that I have this back event bubbled up to here is that I only had to create the interaction once, and then I can just listen for the interaction and then repeat this event at the top level or at the page level so that this event can be seen at runtime. And that's really the most important thing is that when you have events that you want the runtimes to see so that you can make pages communicate with one another, um, they need to be at the top level or the level that um, you know, you're actually gonna be using the artboard at. So like in this, in this case, uh, this menu would be delivered in four different pages. So you'd have the menu page, new game settings, and load screen. So any events that we want the runtimes to see have to be here at the top level. So you can see that uh, new game settings and the load screen all have that back event and they all fire off. Um, it doesn't matter which one we go to whenever you hover over that button and you click it. Now I've also set up some, um, some input changes that happen using that back listener. You can see that when back reports, this one um, also set the menu index of that page to zero and then set the is open Boolean to false for the page. So it's basically working um, like I set up these buttons, um, but in this case, it's only working for back. Now we could also do that with a number of these other things. Um, you know, if there was an additional page, like a continue or something like that, we could have another event called continue um, to go to a different page and then make sure that this page is closed. Okay, so I did a lot of talking about events, but let me show you a sample of how this is going to be constructed at runtime. Um, so what I have here is a mock-up menu of all the different pages that we have and how their different um, events listen to one another. So if you remember the events from uh, this page, um, you know when new game event goes off, close the main menu. And then we're also opening the new game page. So that's what would be happening at runtime. They will, the runtime will listen for the new game event. It'll close that main menu and then open up the new game menu. And then when we hit back, we close the new game menu and open up the main menu. And then it's the same story for the other, um, for the other, ooh, I think I I'm, I'm, might've set that one up. Yeah, I, I set that one up uh, wrong, but... Um, you can see that most of this other stuff is um, working correctly here. But that's the gist of it is, you know, the events are communicating with the runtime. They're being signaled. And then that runtime can see it. And um, our engineers can make the different changes in all of our state machines, like opening up the right pages and closing the right pages. All right. That's really what I wanted to cover here in this video. Um, if you like the video, leave us a thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions, leave us a comment and we'll try to get back to those as quick as possible. Uh, thanks. And we'll see you in the next one.